Hello, and welcome back to my UX and UI design channel. Today, I want to discuss everything around layout grids and how to best apply them into your designs. Layout grids are a design guide that enable us to form structure, hierarchy, and rhythm in our layouts. But beyond that, when dealing with responsive design, it also allows us to see how our components will stretch and move among different display resolutions. As an example, if someone has a bigger monitor compared to a small laptop screen, how will our contents actually shrink and expand? And using these layout grids enable us to control that. Jumping into our Figma workspace, we make layout grids onto frames. So we need to firstly make a frame, and use the frame tool, which is shortcut F. I'm just going to click anywhere. So we want to make it a default desktop size, which you can see on the top of our properties menu. On the top, we have the frame drop down. We can click it and I'm just going to pick the desktop size. Here we have it. So the first thing we want to do to add a layout grid is go to our layout grid section in our properties menu. We have two buttons. We have the four dot icon, which is style. Styles are just libraries that we can make. Um, so we can make a property of a layout grid that we can put onto multiple frames, or we can just make a layout grid for this particular frame. So we're going to do that first. And I'll talk about styles um, later in the video. So we have our layout grid. And by default, we have a grid um, at 10 pixels. And to edit it, you just click on this icon with the nine dots. You can also see you can turn on and off the layout grid or you can remove it by pressing this minus. So clicking on these nine dots, which is the layout grid settings, you can see by default we have a dot grid at 10 pixels and the color is red with a 10% transparency. So we need to go over here with the grid label and by clicking on this drop down, we see our other options. We have grid, columns and rows. And honestly, most of the times you'll be using a column layout grid, so you can just ignore rows and grids. Well, if you really want to use them, you can, but most people only use columns. So I'm just going to click through so you can see. So in columns, we have these four additional properties and rows has the same properties. So going back to columns, the first thing we can see is count again. So instead of setting the pixels first, we want to indicate how many columns we want. And by default, we have 12. And the colors at red 10%, which we're happy to have. The type, there are two types of layout grids that we can have. We can have a fixed type, which just means we set the size of our grid and it never changes size, but it just moves according to the frame. Um, and these ones are left, right, and center. So essentially with left, this grid will always be on the left, regardless of what the frame size is. And obviously the right is the same thing, just on the right side. And then we have the center. So most of the time we'll be using center. As you can imagine that a screen will normally have its content in the middle so that no matter what the monitor size the user is using, they can always see the content and the sides are just additional white space. Also, the reason why we use columns is because when we're on websites or mobile apps, most of the time the content is um, up down. So we want to scroll downwards, not sideways, which is why it's really helpful to have columns to ensure that all your content follows the same structure. So in these fixed um, properties of left, right, and center, we can see width, which is essentially the size of our column. So I'm just going to use 80. So offset is grayed out. And essentially why it's grayed out is because the offset will always change depending on what the frame size is. So we can't really set it to be a fixed number. Otherwise, this type, it doesn't really work. And you can see for the other ones, the offset can work for some. So even though this one's dynamic, the right side can be fixed. So we can say, for example, 50, 
and this will always be 50. Um, but for the center, obviously both sides will flex to be an equal amount. So we're just going to go center with 80 and the gutter, we're going to be 16. If you're interested why I picked these numbers, so most of my design follows the REM unit. And if you don't know much about REM, definitely have a quick Google. It's quite interesting to deep dive into it. But essentially, the standard is one REM unit, which is 16 pixels. So for the gutter, I'm essentially using one REM, which is 16 pixels. And the width, I'm using five REM, which is 80. So just to show you the other type, which is stretch, you can see now the width is grayed out, which essentially means that what I deem to be more important is the margin, whereas before in center, what the most important thing was the width, obviously. So to stretch means my width of the columns can be whatever they need to be to make it work. And for the margin, we can set it to be, what do you want it to be? Let's, let's just make it 200. So we will always have 200 watt space either side and the columns will just work to be whatever it needs to be. And now we can just go back to the default desktop. Now that we've built our first layout grid, let's see what other features we can find. So in the layout grid, we can obviously add multiple grids. So you can see, um, let's do, let's do a row one for now. Um, let's get rid of this grid one, it's kind of annoying. And obviously you can just change the color. So let's just make it this purple or we'll make it 10% as well. There we have it. And then also in our frames, we can obviously hide any of the grids at any time and we can remove it as well. So I'm just going to go undo with Command-Z. Scrolling out, we want to now try to copy these layout grids. Um, but the first thing we notice is that when I duplicate this frame, so I'm just going to hold down the Option key and click drag, you can see the layout grids have also copied across. But if we want to bring it onto a pre-existing frame, what we need to do is use the style tool. So let me just go on this blank one first. When I go to layer grids and I click on the style button, we can see that we have no grid styles and we can't add a new style either, create style. It's kind of great. I'm clicking it, nothing's happening. So the way that we create styles is we create a frame with our grid properties already on. So say this one. And now that we have some grids made, we can go back to the style tool and click create style. It will prompt us to write a name for the styles. I'm just going to write test. So now instead of showing the two, so let, let's go to this one. Instead of showing the two different types of layer grids we have, we just have them under the name test. And obviously I can just click on it, um, see all my grid styles. And then I have to click on this edit style button over here. And now we can see all the layer grids we've had. And the benefit of doing that is, yeah, when we escape out of clicking any components, we can see our full library. So we have the grid styles test. And then when we click on this empty frame, instead of just adding a new layer grid, we can just click on our styles and there we have it quick and easy. Now let's talk about the visibility of layer grids. So the best part of layer grids is that it's user specific. So if you're working with multi -collabor collaborators, when you turn off your grids, it doesn't turn it off for everyone else, which is really good. Um, but also when you share the link as view only, um, those users are also unable to see the layout grids, which could be a good or bad thing. Um, I think it's pretty good. So now going back to the visibility in the properties bar. So in frame 64, we have them on. So like I said before, you can turn them on and off each one. But in frame 63, we have a style layout grid. And something interesting happens when we turn it off. So when we turn it off, it actually turns it off for all screens, which is really interesting. So obviously I can just turn it back on. And on the hover, it doesn't tell you what the shortcut is, but to find it, um, I think you have to go quick actions. So that's command forward slash. 
And if you type in grid, there's the shortcut, which is control G, show lag grids. So if I just go control G, you can see I can turn it off and on again. The interesting thing is even if frame 64 has them on, when I turn it off here, which is the styles, and I go back to frame 64, it still says it's on for whatever reason. Um, but when I click it again, for some reason, it turns this one off, but turns everything else back on. Very confusing. I don't know why Figma does it like that, but we'll just have to deal with it. So yeah, definitely remember the shortcut Control G. And the reason why I like that shortcut is instead of going through each green and turning them off or going to a style and clicking this I button, it's just easy to quickly turn them on and off. Hopefully you feel more confident now in creating layout grids within your Figma files. I'll be releasing a part two of this video where we will talk about layout grid advanced tricks. But that's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.